Guys, we're back in Needham today, and last time we were here, we were just about to start plaster, and what you can see behind me is that we are well into the interior finished carpentry. So I wanna walk you guys through a couple of those details. First off, big thank you to Cucan Brothers. You guys know that we work with Cucan Brothers on every one of our projects. A couple of reasons why we do that. Number one, their profiles have a deeper cut to them, which gives it that really accentuated shadow when everything is painted. The profile is just a much deeper cut than a lot of these profiles that are on market. Additionally, these profiles were developed by Cucan Brothers as well as Brent Hull. So they're a little bit different than what is available here in Massachusetts. So a lot of people that build around us don't use this stuff because they don't think it's available. Cucan Brothers actually ships around the entire country. So we put our order in and everything and get shipped on uh, onto site. And you'll actually see when we get to the entryway, we have a big rack in there with all of the profiles uh, for this entire home. So we are in one of the home offices and what you're seeing on the wall is a V-groove paneling. Traditionally, this, these are gonna be individual pieces installed one at a time all the way around the room. We actually decided to take MDF sheets and put this on a CNC and actually use a V-groove bit to create these big sheets. So what you see here is a four by 10 piece of MDF with V-groove on it. And why we're doing that is speed. We're able to put four feet up at one time by cutting that in one shot. Not in this room, but when you're working overhead, it reduces the time that you're working overhead by putting it up in sheet stock. Number two, uh, as these are installed individually, over time, you know, you're going to get expansion and contraction. You have a little bit more stability with the MDF. Uh, and you're only dealing with one seam rather than a seam everywhere. And why is that important? The reality is you're gonna see some shrinking in the winter it can cause a pretty unsightly line. So by doing it in sheet stock, that's a huge benefit to us. Uh, and of course, the speed of it. So like I said, these panels were made on the CNC and they're being installed uh, in, in a really fast fashion. This whole room will be painted, which is why you're seeing a lot of these panels are all primed. And if you look up, we have this really killer crown detail that Teak and his team designed, and it actually does not have a cap to it. So that transition between wall to the vaulted ceiling uh, has a really cool shadow to it. So when that ceiling is bright white and these walls, I believe, are a, a darker gray, you're gonna have a really nice crisp line uh, because you're not actually connecting that crown to that ceiling. Now above us are those reclaimed beams. We ripped those out, we talked about before. We ripped those out of the existing home. The guys have done a great job cleaning them up and then protecting them while everything is getting painted. Before we go into the next room, that wall is undone. Why is that? Well, that's because we have our electric service coming into our extreme box right here. The team did not want to be running cords in and out of the window, especially a big heavy cord. So we've left that undone and we're really, really close to getting our permanent electric service hooked up. So we'll be able to finish that. As a walk out of the, the office, this room is actually going to be a library, which is essentially just means we're gonna have bookcases everywhere. This is a second office, uh, and this office here is just gonna be getting crown molding, and you can see our reclaimed beam up there, also covered in paper and protection. The casing that we're using in the house is a Cucan Brothers KB401. This is a casing we, we use quite a bit. Really nice profile, like I said, you have the deep cut lines uh, and really, really sharp profiling for this casing. All of this casing is ran long. You can see all of our doors are installed here. We're going to be installing our floor before our base. So once all of the flooring comes in, we're gonna undercut all of our jams and our casing, get the floor installed, and then we'll come back and do the baseboard. Uh, working our way around primary suite here, this is actually one of the areas that we have a V-groove ceiling. Uh, so if you look up, you can see this eight foot panel, you have this seam right in the middle, and then you have another four foot section going into the wall. Against the wall, you have these gaps, you have that seam, obviously is not the final condition. We actually have a very low profile beam detail. Uh, it's only about five quarters of an inch with a profile on either side, which will tuck against the wall, uh, and then two sections in the middle, one of them covering that beam. So once it's all painted, it'll be really nice looking. Uh, and none of those seams, and of course, all of the fasteners will be hidden. Uh, looking into the primary bathroom here, a couple things I wanted to point out. We have this awesome pocket door. Uh, don't have hardware on it, otherwise I pull it out but soft close, soft open, really tall doors. You're gonna see that a lot on this first floor. I'm about six foot and we have about eight foot doors throughout. Scaled really well with a lot of the high ceilings on this first floor. Really cool detail when you walk in here, a lot of this is gonna to come together, especially with millwork. We have millwork kind of everywhere, these beautiful elliptical arches. Down there is a door and it looks like it would go to a linen closet, but if I were to open it up, it's about four inches deep. 
Uh, and someone had asked, uh, what is that? Is that, a, is that a mistake? Why is there a door there? Uh, and I actually really like it. It's, so you have shower, you have toilet room, then you have this door, and this right here will actually house a floor to ceiling mirror. Uh, and the benefit of that, you open it, you use it when you need it, and then you close the door, and then you don't have a mirror that you're always looking to, especially from the bedroom there. Um, really cool little detail, and again, you're getting a lot of the traditional detailing with the door, the casing, it really just blends in, and you know maybe it looks like a, a uh, linen closet, but it's not, it's a mirror closet. So walking our way down into the main corridor, uh, we still have our custom windows that will be going in the hallway here. Uh, we have our custom staircase that um, King Stairs is building up in New Hampshire. Hopefully we're getting up to his shop to see that. Here's our trim rack. Window stool versus window sill. Window sills are on the outside. They're pitched to allow water to drain down the window and out and away from the home. A window stool is going to be the inside of the window. And so your window is here and here's your stool. We'll actually, we'll actually look at a window up close when we get up on the second floor. And this is that profile here. But you can see it's all organized. We have our KB401 casing. We have our square stock for our jam extensions. We have some small crown molding. We have our V-groove individual piece where we need to. We have our crown, uh, big crown molding and our baseboard will be going in, like I said, after floors. Speaking of floors, uh, our floors actually showed up just last week. Five inch, plain sawn, white oak. And it is character grade, so it's gonna have some character in it. But plain sawn is the direction in which this is sawn out of a log. But you, then you get these really nice cathedraling grain pattern going through all of the oak. Uh, went with the five where it's, you know, we, we, we consider going wide, but the wide tends to be a little bit more modern where we want it to be on the more traditional side. So we went to a five inch white oak. Above me is the final, hopefully the final phase of staging in this room. Uh, if you look over here, we have our, our hemlock beams uh, installed with our horizontal truss. So you're gonna see about five anchors right above me here uh, that are exposed. That's actually going to get covered by this really intricate curved bracket that the team is working on. Pause right now because the team from Oliver is here to plaster this wall. And it's basically the last piece that needs to be plastered. And that's all of the detailing around the beam, a lot of stop bead, a lot of board that tucks into that beam. Uh, so they're gonna get that done before we finalize our, our, our last uh, truss details. This fireplace, a couple of you have asked, this is actually going to get a thin brick veneer all the way up. Uh, and that thin brick will get a parge coat. I think we're working with Colby at Trowel on that. And it will be similar to what's going on behind the kitchen hood. Speaking of the kitchen hood, we've actually CNC'd this material as well. Our carpenters are working on building the, the substructure for that kitchen hood and that will actually get boarded and plastered. Uh, it will have this limestone-esque like finish uh, that has these columns coming down uh, and beautifully tied into that ceiling there. You can see the V-groove as well, tucked in here. We've shown it in another episode, but everything is tucked in behind that beam. Why don't we scoot through here and we'll head upstairs. So I actually grabbed our floor sample um, and this it will be the, the color. It's a very traditional old American uh, medium brown and it has a more matte finish to it. So that's our control sample uh, for all of our white oak. Let's walk you through a couple of things here. We have our Geldwin window, it's a casement window, casement meaning it swings out. Um, and then we have our jam extensions. So this is gonna be our jam here. And then we have our casing. So the KB401 casing that goes up and around. Uh, the guys do a really good job making sure that these miters are not only tight, but have the fastening required to hold those miters tight. To really, uh, that, that's one of the first things I'm looking at during install is making sure that there's no unsightly gaps. A lot of times I see that being filled with filler or caulking uh, and that's certainly not what we wanna see. We wanna see them really nice and tight before paint. Now down below, we have our stool. And our window stool is we have that extension here which is part of that window and you can see the seam right here. This is where that stool material is actually anchored onto here. So typically what we're doing is putting um, possibly a biscuit or maybe a domino connecting the stool into that jam. And then as you look down below here, you have your uh, profile of the, of the stool. You have your small Scotia, which is this, you know, uh, basically cove molding. Uh, and then this piece down on the bottom here is called your apron. Uh, and that apron is another profile. Sometimes you'll see this casing flipped uh, and, and used as the profile for the apron, uh, but instead we have a separate profile that is specific to that apron. 
So we'll walk this way to what we're calling the Jack and Jack bathroom. Jack and Jack, there's two boys, uh, bedrooms here, and they have a shared bathroom here. So what we have is actually two vanities. They'll each have their own, a private toilet room, and then a tub shower combo. So we have a large format 24 by 24 tile on the floor with matching grout. And then we have this really cool, very simple subway-esque tile on the wall. Things that we're looking for and, and things that we're considering when we're doing an install like this is making sure that the tile comes past the tub. You can see the guys did a really good job uh, coping that around the tub. But even on this other side here, this comes all the way down. The reason that you want that water sits up here when you're taking a shower. If water to travel down and this would be plastered, over time th this would really fail. So by having this tile, if there's moisture, it's gonna make its way down, hit the floor, and we're gonna, and we're gonna silicone all of that all the way around uh, to prevent any moisture from making its way into the plaster, but also below the tile. Speaking of below the tile, why don't we take a look at the laundry room because you can actually see our waterproofing detail uh, to prevent a catastrophic leak from causing tremendous damage. What you see is we have our Schluter Dietra on the floor. If you look at the wall, we actually have a curdy band that is going from the Dietra up the wall. And why we're doing that is essentially that if we were to ever experience a leak in this laundry room, we are on the second floor, we wanna contain it as much as possible. Oftentimes when we do find leaks, especially when it pertains to showers or tubs or even a laundry room, um, what we're seeing is that water tri typically travels across the floor and makes its way under the baseboard or between the baseboard and the floor and then finding a cavity or a chase down into the ceiling below. So by adding that band up the wall, we're essentially creating a bathtub in that room. So if any water were to pool and hit the wall, it's gonna stay in here. It's a small detail, but a, a worthwhile detail. Uh, lastly, right here, I just wanna point this out. Um, Mike actually put together a mock-up. Uh, so this is some of the thin brick uh, tile that we're gonna be using. Uh, and what they do is essentially, when I say thin brick, uh, it's actually a full tile that they're saw sawing off each face. And then it's, it's basically half inch to sometimes five eighths of an inch thick. Uh, and this will be used on the fireplace as well as the behind the backsplash on the range wall. But we're also using it in the mudroom floor. So what you can see here is essentially putting together a running bond pattern uh, for approval for the client. So when I say running bond, essentially you have this 50% coverage. So you have a full tile and then the next one is offset 50%. Uh, and this gives a, the client a good visual for what that running bond looks like, also what the joint spacing looks like, and when that dries, we can actually grout it uh, or mortar it so they get the full effect. Thanks for sticking around this week, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the progress. Uh, stay tuned because we have a lot more of the interior coming together. Millwork, material millwork is already underway with fabrication. We got a, a, a ton of millwork in this home, uh, and it's really gonna start coming together over the next couple months.